in you because the word of God came to me to preach. And I am on top of this and walking in the power of Jesus Christ. Coming out of Matthew chapter 8. And coming out of that chapter, see, Jesus had went before God. And Jesus came down out of the mountain because he had supped before God and he had heard what God had told him to do. He came down with power in authority. And as he was coming down with this power and authority from the mountain, look, I'm going to read it and you just listen. Listen now because God got a blessing for us today. When he was come down from the mountain, a great mother too followed him. See, people got to follow you when they know the word. When they hear the word. When they see things start being done unnatural. See, you, 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 you and I must understand God want to do some unnatural things here at Faith Deliver, but they got to come to get it. Come on, man. But if you ain't coming to get it, then you can't fault nobody but yourself. Right. Man. See, God got a remedy for all lazy people. And God got a remedy for people that want it. Come on, you that's here today, punch your hand to the right side of this building. Say, thank you, angels, for showing up. Thank you, angels, for showing up. Amen. Amen. So we see here, and behold, there came a leopard. One that was sick, one that had some issues, one that had a curse. Uh oh. Y'all hear? See, that one came to him. See, you got to come to Jesus and ask Jesus for something when you're sick. Right. If you never come to him and ask him, you can't be healed. Come on. I'm before him daily. Because the enemy that I'm fighting ain't Lucifer. He want to throw me. He want to destroy me. He want to throw sickness. He want to throw defeat. He want to throw everything he can at me to make me shut up. Come on. And I can't stop doing what God has told me to do. That's right. He has anointed me to come before you today to tell you, I want to show you here and say, the Lord worship him. Mm -hmm. Saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you are not clean, he said, he said, he asked the Lord, if thou will, make him clean. Now everyone know, uh, some of us know about the, the lepers, they couldn't stay in the mix of the people like the AIDS. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. Because they was contaminated. Amen. And, the, and, and, and the people who put them out of the city because they didn't want them in the city contaminated. Where, where is thy faith? Mm -hmm. Where is thy belief in Jesus Christ? See, Jesus came out of his Praise it and magnify God from a mountain into the city. And the first day he met him was a sick person. Uh -huh. and, and, and he asked Jesus to clean him. See, if you are not asking Jesus to clean up your mess and your junk or your garbage, it won't be clean. Right. Is I'm talking to you? Right. I'm talking to you lights. As I'm talking to the chair, there's an angel sitting over there. Now my nephew sitting there now. He didn't join in with the angels. Y'all ain't talking. See, you can't look at how many showing up. You got to look at what God's going to do. See, see, see. And when God do it, then we got to just thank God for it. Now, you, you, you see, he said, make him clean, didn't he? Now, did Jesus come back and ask him, are you saved? Hello, hello, somebody. But see, see, I want to show you in the word where when you're walking in the power of God, you can do mighty things. And Jesus put forth his hand. Anyone need to be clean today? Amen. And he touched him saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately 
his lupus, his letters was clean. See, see, he had the faith to ask. And Jesus had the power to remember. See, if you ask for healing, you'll be healed. But if you procrastinate and have doubt, well, maybe, look, I'm fighting a spirit that's trying to bring a disease upon me that killing me that came out of the military. And see, I'm fighting him because he coming 24-7 now. Dizziness. And he ain't giving me no rest. But I have to stay before God and the Spirit of the Lord say, you don't have that. But the enemy still you kind of oppressed. And some of you are being oppressed. But you're just afraid to step out like this guy here stepped out. He said he wanted to be clean. See, if you want to be something, you will receive something. But if you want to stay in all this preliminary and this stuff you're going through, then so be. But I see that Jesus stretched forth his hand and touched the individual. And Jesus spoke and said, be clean. And see, Jesus has given his disciples, his prophets, his bishop and pastor in the Bible men the same type of power. But you got to believe. You got to understand when a hand is stretched forth and touched you, it's not John Willie Robinson Jr. hand, it's the hand of the Lord that have anointed this man or woman and touch you. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, you got to look to the hills which come as your help. Stop looking at the natural man and natural woman that bringing forth the word and start looking at the spirit of God that are upon them. Amen. And causing them to do what they have to do. Right. See, we are all dressed down today. And dressed down in, in our football player because it's a Super Bowl at 6 30. They don't got their liquor ready. They don't got their drugs ready. They baking the chicken. They got the uh, they got the macaroni ready. They got the grill ready. See, see, the world is all messed up. They must get ready for a football game. Then they come into the house. But I guarantee you tomorrow they gonna be on that job. But if they don't go on that job tomorrow. Then they're going to be coming over here and want you to lay hands on them they need a job. Get on my body. Why would you lay hands on somebody that don't want it? Y'all ain't talking. So see, Jesus sent me here today. I'm not going to be before you long and not about the Super Bowl neither. But it's about doing the will of God and move on out the way. See, that's the problem. We as preachers and pastors and bishops, we need to move on out of the way and let God have his way. And when we move out of the way and let God have his way, see, we won't have this issue. Jesus didn't have an issue. Jesus had the power and authority and he took it over. And that's what we got to do. In the five old minutes as bishops and pastors, we got to let Jesus take us over and move us to do his will. And when we do that, God is a just and merciful God to, you know, to show up, to show the people his power. That's right. And see, it just didn't stop there. Now, Jesus told him something. I can tell you all you want, and you still yet won't do it. And they wonder why all kind of things coming against them from Monday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. Look what Jesus told the individual in verse 4. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Hello? If the doctor said you got something, and you came up in here today, and you go back before that doctor, and the hands been laid on you, and you totally living, you need to give God the glory on and tell that doctor. Y'all ain't talking. Uh -huh. I'm healed. Hello, somebody. No, where your blood, I don't care what that blood say, I'm healed. Amen. I don't care what you picked up in the blood, the Lord say, I'm healed, I'm healed. See, when you start confessing and you start telling the doctors and these ones that are uh, telling you you got something. 
How would you feel you go get a checkup and they say you got AIDS? Mm. Come on, somebody. God forbid, see? Got one God forbid. How would you feel if you go get a checkup and they say your kidney ain't functioning? Mm. Y'all ain't talking. How, 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 would, how would you feel when you go before and they say you got blockers in your heart and, and we don't, you don't find a heart in 24 hours, you're going to die? What you going to do, church? See, this man here said, I want to be clean. See, 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 I've been there, done that. That's why I can talk the way I'm talking. I had blockage. All three of my arteries were blocked. But God. Amen. Now, you, you all that know a little about my about medicals and me, medical situations, how can a man walk with all three of his arteries blocked? Okay. He had on somebody. But the proof was put in the pudding, wasn't it? See, God was leading and guiding. See, when you stand still and follow God, you can do the impossible. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. No, Pittsburgh didn't make it. I'm wearing it, these jerseys and the Steelers and all that. I don't care who made it. <laughs> There's two teams out there going to play at 630 today. Now, we, we started at 2. We, we hear now it's 2. 40. And it won't take God long to do what he got to do. Y'all ain't talking. So we see here what God, Jesus spoke to the man. So now Jesus been to go, in verse 5, he been to go into another city. And this time he went in the city and he met a centurion a, a, a soldier. And the soldier came to Jesus. See, you all don't want to come to Jesus when you have an issue. When you're having problems. When you're going through something. But see, I'm different. If some brothers and John William Robinson Jr., I'm going to God. I ain't going to no doctor for everything. I'm going to go to Jesus. Because, see, I know who's sending all that junk at John William Robinson Jr., the devil. When you know and identify who causing the issue, then you ought to have enough power and authority in Christ to, to resist it. He said, resist the devil and heal what? Flee. Hello? Oh, we let him come in, drive the car, sit at the house, listen to the music, look at TV with him. We let him come on in and have sup with us and, and all that. We do. I said, we. Now, I didn't say you all. I said, we. We mean all, don't we? Mm -hmm. We is what? Plural? Mm -hmm. All right then. So see, it ain't all about me. It's all about all of us. We allow him to do stupid stuff to us. Then we get mad at God because God won't defend us. God defended this man. And God going to show you the great power now. The soldier came to Jesus and said his servant was down home with the palsy. In other words, he was in a wheelchair. He couldn't move. He couldn't do nothing. Y'all ain't talking. See, see, see. And then Jesus repeated to him, "Say, I go with you." But see, the this, this soldier said his home was not worthy for him to walk in. In other words, he said he he was not all in Christ for Christ to come into his home. A lot of us won't do that. We had that uh, Jim Dandy. We'll have that magic one. Jim Dandy. Yeah, yeah, that Jim Dandy look. We'll have that wine and beer. Oh, well, Jack Dandy. <laughs> Jim Bean, thank you. <laughs> so we see here, he said he wasn't worthy for Jesus to come into his home. But he told Jesus, he shared this with Jesus. He said, if you speak the word, then I carry that word to my servant. But then he showed him in the scripture. He said, I have one when I tell him, come, he'll come. And I had one when I said, go, there, go. And I had another one. He, in other words, he showed Jesus the authority he had over the soldiers that he was over. 
You got to show the devil the authority that you got over him. In order for Jesus to work this thing out. And see, and see, by me going to Christ with all this every time he comes at me with these issues, God is blocking him. God is telling him that you can't do that. God is sharing with him, you can go on home about your business. See, you don't have to fight, but the Spirit of the Lord will fight for you. When you got authority. When you tell that enemy, uh-uh, you're lying to the truth, and I ain't going that way, and I don't receive it. And then Jesus was so amazed with the soldier, and he had let 12 men follow him, but didn't have that type of faith. Y'all see what I'm saying? People can come up in here, but if they ain't got the faith, they're going to walk out the same way they came up in here. I don't care how much power and authority I have, they're going to come up in here lost, and they're going to go back out lost. Right. And the reason being because they resist the Lord. And when you resist the Lord, it's not my, it's not my fault. I'm coming to be a messenger. I'm coming to tell you that I'm coming to tell you what God will do and can do. But you got to be able to accept what God is saying in this message. He gives the power to the, to the prophet, do he not? He get a power, you know, to the evangelist, do he not? He get power to the five four, for they can show people that who they are in Christ. And when they see that and know that, then that's when people start going out. See, you got to go out of them doors and start telling people out like there on the outside who he really is. You got to go out there and tell them, I got a blessed Sunday. God bless me, but if you go on out there acting the same way they acting, they like they ain't coming up in no church. I don't care what church you going to. People ain't coming in no dead church. Amen. Hello, hit me a note, Josh. Hit me a note. There you go. You know that song I love. Play that. The wife said, "Play that." Come on. Saying 
in any occasion. I don't care what you're going through, what you've been through. If you want to be set free, you got to put that what you're going through behind you and walk forward in Christ. Amen. It's time for Bishop to step out on faith in Christ Jesus. That people may see that he has sent me to do the will people are missing. A lot of you missing some things. And you wonder why you're missing it. When you put the world before Christ, that's why you're missing it. When you put sin before Christ, that's why you're missing it. But when you close the door to what I just said to the world mess and sin mess, you'll be overcome. Hello, somebody. See, see, we, didn't, we shouldn't have to wait till we get sick and start crying out to God. Amen. We shouldn't have to wait till we get flat, broken, ain't got no money to pay our bills to cry out to God. Hello, somebody. Amen. We shouldn't have to do that. Come on, somebody. Amen. These are some heavy-hearted people in the house today. But I am here to tell you the Holy Spirit is saying through me, the load can be lifted if you would start crying out to him now. See, you got to cry out to God and ask God to help you. See, pastor was laying there asleep. I was crying out to God. Pastor was up in the kitchen cooking. I was crying out to God because I want to see a different. I want to walk and believe in a different. Amen. And see, every time Lucifer come against me, it put me in a different arena. Every time he tried to cause an issue, it put me up higher. Because I know it's him. But I'm here to tell you today that God can fix and bless you with anything that you desire. Long as it's holy. See, a lot of times we want to be millionaires that don't even want to pay a tithe. A lot of times we want to be millionaires and we don't even want to help folk. Mm. Uh oh. A lot of times, see, you, you, you know, for the whole week, they've been celebrating Kobe Bryant and the other people that died with him. Lord, help us. When are we going to start celebrating Jesus? The one that went to Calvary for us. Kobe Brown was good at what he did while he was on earth. I'm not taking nothing from that. And I don't want nobody to get to my well, uh-uh, he was all right doing what he did best about. Hello. When are we going to start doing what we will do for God, for soul? Hello, somebody. My boy played basketball. I played basketball. My nephew back there played basketball. My minister over here played basketball. So be it. It's all about Jesus, y'all. He give a life, he take a life. It was his time. When my time to go, you can cry all you want. You can put me over the television. You can put me over the radio. You can ride me all through Newberry. I'm gone. Man. When that spirit is gone, that's it. You just got a body running around through him. Y'all ain't talking. Amen. I said to my wife, I said, I'll tell you what, when I go, hold me at least three days, but the most is five days. After that, who going to be there? They'll be there if they ain't put me on down. Because I'm gone. You ain't holding me for no week and two weeks. Hello, somebody. Y'all ain't talking. See, 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 we get quiet when you go to talk about death. This man was dead with a disease. This other man was dead in a wheelchair. But by speaking the word, the man got up out of the wheelchair. When, when the soldier went to his house, the man was already up walking. Now that's power. Amen. Jesus didn't even have to go and lay hands on them. He just spoke the word. We don't have to run every time somebody calls us. Oh, I went to the hospital. Well, so be it. I never will forget. Mama called me. I was in North Carolina about my dad. I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and call the doctor. She thought I was talking about a physical doctor. I called on Jesus. Amen. And I stayed in Fayetteville. And the next day, you know, Daddy was all right. See? I would have got in that car, acting all up in the flesh, coming down the road, could have killed myself. 
When are we going to put God to the test? And hello, somebody. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Now, some things we have to do what we do. But some things, when you're in Christ and fully, you got to say, Lord, I can't make it like I want to make it. I can't go like I want to go. Send that angel. Send that healing virtue. The touch. And when he sent that healing virtue to the touch, I don't know what happened. I know what happened. The Holy Ghost showed up. <clears throat> when people come out of a dead zone and come back alive, God showed up. And that's who you're supposed to give the glory on. Not no Bishop Robinson. Amen. Just because I'm touching and agreeing with you and praying, the glory go to God. Right. And it's always supposed to go to God. God said he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Why are you giving man the glory and won't give God the glory? Amen. See, we got it backwards here in the world. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. Amen. And we need to get it, get it right. When Jesus died, they crucified him for a lie. They lied on him. Called him a wine bill. Called him a blasphemer. Called him, he was blaspheming against God. And he was God. And the very one that's supposed to have been praising and magnifying him was the one sent him to the cross. Them hypocrites. Them lying wonders. And they wonder why things are happening in these nations. Or in this nation. Or in this world. They ain't serving nothing but themselves. You let somebody hit that lie over tomorrow. Hmm. Praise God. I hope the Lord, one of y'all don't hit it. Y'all talking about you ain't gonna tell. I'm gonna come and tell you. I'm gonna come to your house. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say, see, you put that before you put it for God. Ain't no vacation. I don't care how many percentage you give. That percentage ain't going to help your soul Amen. when it ain't in your heart. You got to give from your heart. I don't care if God bless each and every one in here with $10 million. If it ain't in your heart, you're not going to hold it. That $10 million will go in six months so you wouldn't know how to secure it. Hello, somebody. And he can give one of us one million in the last two we leave this earth. He said, how high is that, bitch? How high is that? See, the 10 million person going, everybody they know and their friends, everybody going to be at your house then. Amen. Your enemy, your children, y'all ain't talking. Amen. Your cousin, <laughs> and hell, hello, somebody. The one that ain't been around you for 50 years. Oh, yeah, John, you know, I've been praying for you. Get on up out my house. Don't, police, I call the police and have the police to lock you up. Talking about John, I've been praying for you. See, you see how the devil would do? You go on live television talking about you got ten million dollars and see how many friends you got. You won't have you have a whole new bear at your house. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking. Some things that you see, you see what Jesus told the, the young man to do? Say, don't go tell no man. Why are you telling people your business? Amen. I hit it. That's it. You ain't gonna do it. You see what I got on? This girl still with shoes, pants, and shirt. Y'all ain't talking. I ain't going to tell you I'm not going out here buying no Rolls Royce or no Bentley and all that. got to move in no uh, uh, mansion with my mansion sitting waiting on me in heaven free. Amen. While I'm going to pay a man uh, $10 million for a mansion and I got one in heaven free. Y'all ain't talking up in here. So see, the, the, the soldier understood don't play with Jesus. What I'm saying today, don't play with the Lord. Come on, man. Stop playing with him. See, that soldier said, I'm not worthy. But if you speak that word, my servant going to come on. And see, it, it just didn't stop there now. In my clothes. Huh? I know y'all saying, huh? Jesus was still walking. And he got in a boat and went to the other side. And when he got to the other side, he got out and was walking by this mountain, this cave. And them demons were right. Y'all follow it. It's in there. There were two demons. There were two men full of Satan in the cave. And they recognized who Jesus was and the one that was with Jesus didn't even know Jesus was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. 
But them demons know Jesus. They know him. Have you come before our time? Look at that, see? Asking the Lord Jesus Christ, have they come before their time? Have he come before their time? And said, please don't send them back. Let them go in them pigs, them hogs, to eating over there. Mm -hmm. See? They know what hell is all about. But they ain't going to tell you all. Mm -hmm. They know what type of life is in hell. Them demons. Come on, somebody. Amen. But see, they, they, they can't come back. They come back and get in us. And we think we're doing the Lord will and doing Satan with you. Hello? And see, God, Jesus had to rebuke them. And they begged him. Oh, please. Just let them go in, in them, them pigs there. There was men standing around taking care of pigs. And Jesus said, so be it, go. He didn't have the oil. He chopped my rod off. So, yeah, nah, speaking in no tongues. He just told them out of his verbal mouth, go. And them demons left. What are you saying? I'm saying we're supposed to have that same like power. That's right, man. And that power that we're supposed to have in Christ Jesus is supposed to be able to show people who we are in him. Mm -hmm. Not take their thought and tell them, I'm better than Jesus. No, I never, never take and tell them I'm better than Jesus. I'm, I'm just a big old boy that was born in 1955 to come and tell you that he can do things through me. Mm -hmm. But I had to give him the glory and honor that he doing. And what I'm saying today, I'm saying that, see, the Spirit had already reckoned with me, my Holy, yes, Lord. He had already told me some things. Yes, right, take me home, Josh. See, the Spirit of the Lord had already told me what my day was going to be like. And when he told me what my day was going to be like, I was sitting here. I said, where are you sitting? And I, y'all notice I was scrolling through this here. And I was scrolling. Why do you think I was scrolling through this? Why do you think? Anybody? I was scrolling through here to get another message. <laughs> and the Spirit of said, uh-uh, give them that what I wrote to you. Hello? So see, if you're here today, come on, Joshua. And if you come forth and be honest with yourself, now the Word of God said there was four supposed to be here. If they want to shame, come forward. Four ain't here. <laughs> and I got to roll down and the pastor can read it. And when I said that, that there's four here that holding all this stuff on the inside. And there's some that have been going through for two years with a plague that have plagued them. I said, come for is that, is that on there, Pastor? That's right. See, you got to understand, I know who I am, but do you know who you are? And see, if you want that plague to stay on you and you shame to come forward because people here, forget these people. They can't do nothing for you. If they could, they would. They should. You got to look at what God kind of do to cause that issue or that problem that you've been going through for these years that he can destroy it. Hello? Now, I'm going to tell you what the devil been trying to throw at me prostate. And y'all know what prostate do to a man, don't you? Hello, somebody. But the Spirit of the Lord told me in my bathroom this morning, you don't have that. The devil just kind of make you get over what I'm sending you to do. Hello, somebody. But I've already been checked for it. You remember when I told you? And I've been cleared. But the devil still yet kind of come back. I ain't receiving all that negative in my mind and in my heart. Come on, somebody, stand to your feet. Yeah.